Hi friends, I'm homesick from work, which is a weird thing to say because I work from home most days. Um, I'm trying to land on a good like bedtime routine and I guess I'll explain why. So I recently became um, someone who wakes up early in the morning. I'm not going to call myself a morning person because that would be a f lie. Uh, but I still like get up and I enjoy being able to get up. Like at some point I just realized that like life with like a 40 hour work week was just going to be much more enjoyable if I didn't immediately like have to wake up and devote my time to like someone else's project, if that makes sense. Like I just wanted to be able to wake up um, and not have someone else be the first thing I think about. Uh, as you can tell, I'm going to be a really wonderful parent. Anyway, I just figured it might make me a little bit happier and it really has and I actually have been like really successful in this But something that you don't know about me and this probably does explain why I'm more of like a night person Is that I'm a little bit of an insomniac and let me be very clear that I'm misdiagnosing myself when I call myself that But like it just gives you a sense of the fact like I'm just not very good at sleeping most of the time I think I'm fine at sleeping through the night for the most part, but falling asleep my brain is like we're not going to do that anytime soon. So I've always aspired to have a bedtime routine that like just helps ease that a little bit. And even like to have a bedtime routine to look forward to it because I think I have for so long associated it with like stress and strife and like me fighting with my body to sleep that I think I just haven't, I don't have like an awesome relationship with sleeping, which I feel like sounds really fucking lame, but it's true, okay? <laughs> legitimately the most first world problems. to report on some of my preliminary research. I've picked up a few nuggets so far. I will say the advice that I least like to hear about falling asleep or like having an easier time falling asleep is to turn off screens before bed. That's not to say I don't want to continue to try to do it. I just am skeptical and I literally hate the advice because it's like, yeah, just stop being addicted. Like, I, that is the opposite of how these things were designed. So one thing though that I was kind of thinking about in the latest video that I watched, he mentioned, oh, read a book instead of looking at your phone. I don't know that it's occurred to me before to think of reading as in service of bedtime. I feel like my relationship with reading can be a little bit sour at times because I associate it with like smartness and I put a lot of pressure on myself to like be able to claim I have read a lot, which leads to me not reading a lot because um, I associate it with like all these ways I'm falling short. But this is a really interesting way to think about it. I'm like, what if I chose books not in the interest of like feeling good about how smart I am? What if I literally just chose books in the interest of sleeping? Which means like only for pleasure. Like I'm literally the main goal is that I want to pick up this book before bed. I think that's a noble goal. And I think that that kind of mindset shift could be really helpful. Okay, and then another piece of advice that I did immediately take was a tool slash gadget. Um, and that tool is the bedtime mode on iPhones and like setting times for that. I didn't even know that it existed. So maybe that'll be good. <laughs> the last thing. I was watching myself get annoyed in the last video that I was watching because it was very scientific and ooh, 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 we're so perfect. I guess that's why I'm making this video. I'm like, I don't need someone to be like, here's how to be perfect. I need someone to be like, let's be pragmatic here. You're going to fuck this up and we're going to fucking adapt this thing to service that. Okay, it's been a few days since the last time I recorded and I continued to do research probably like a day or so following that day. Um, and then after that, I just kind of wanted to like sit with the information and kind of like try to think creatively about how to turn it all into a routine in a way that I won't hate. <laughs> but the main points that I heard and the main points that I felt would be actually like applicable to a routine that I would want to create for myself are basically the following. One of the things which I didn't know was that it's good to be cold 
Uh, and I, I guess like in some ways that's like instinctual because I, I obviously never like to go to sleep when I'm like overly warm. But that was interesting. Another thing that was interesting was this idea that like you should expect a burst of energy right before bed. Like at first I was like, what do I do with this info? And I was like, actually, that's kind of fun. And I think the main reason that the videos were wanting to um, emphasize that was because they didn't want people to feel like it was a problem because like the anxiety that could result of that could make it hard to go to sleep, but it's actually really normal to have a burst of energy just before bed. Obviously the no screens thing, which you know I find annoying. Um, and like, I'm definitely not going to implement that in like a perfect way, but I feel like I have some ideas for how to implement it in a way that could be interesting. And then, and this one I already said too, using books before bed in response to the screens thing, but ideally in a way that feels like natural and like fun and not forced. Okay, so those are the key takeaways from the research. Here is how I want to use them. So the cold thing, I already mentioned this a little bit, but just kind of like checking in on the temperature of the room when I go into the bedroom, right? Easy. If it's too hot or if I'm noticing like the radiator's on a little bit too much, we'll turn on the AC, whatever. That part's easy. Um, the burst of energy. Okay, this is the one I'm kind of most excited about. And so, I don't know, I guess I was just kind of like thinking about this like burst of energy. It's like, fine, I like expect it, whatever. Um, but then I was like, well, how can I use that? Like maybe I can like lean into that in a way and make it part of the bedtime routine. Like what is something that I could do that would make me feel more relaxed and would also kind of utilize this energy. And it just kind of occurred to me, like just straightening the room. I kind of already have routines that facilitate like straightening the living room and like the kitchen. That's our whole apartment. So <laughs> fucking done, except for the room. And that just kind of dawned on me. And I've been doing that and I really like it. Like it just makes the space feel really nice and like cozy and relaxing and just like less hectic because you know, like I feel like clutter, a lot of people say it makes them feel like a little bit stressed out. So I've really liked that. And I think it also makes for like the morning routine to kind of feel like we're really starting off on like a good foot. The no screens thing was probably the trickiest. And I was like, okay, Mackenzie, how do I incorporate this advice without like going insane or feeling super limited? And this is kind of what I landed on. I am someone who really likes screens just before bed. And some of that has to do with like anxiety about like the following work day or like just the following day, excitement about the following day name it i'm sure my brain has used it as like an excuse to like not want to go to sleep we're either excited we're anxious whatever else <laughs> so this is my current solution and it's subject to change and it, and, it, and it probably will because like these things are kind of hard to land on with the first shot but basically what i'm trying right now is incorporating screen time in the routine by making it like a part of the routine i think it'll help i think by implementing it into a structure it will feel less like this thing that I can't be pulled away from because I like vaguely need to go do something else or vaguely need to spend another way with my time. I think it just kind of like reorients my thinking about it to like, no, I actually want to turn off the screen now because I want to have time to do this thing, this other thing before bed or these other things before bed because they feel good. So I think that's also a good thing about this like bedtime routine. It's like, I'm doing these things because I'm excited about them and I know that they will feel good. Okay, and then the last thing was the book thing. And I already kind of started that. I like bought a book that I was excited about, just seemed interesting. Not because it was gonna like make me seem smart, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. Okay, and that's it. Those are the key takeaways, how I'm thinking about them and how they're going to be incorporated into the routine. Next, I'm going to summarize the routine for you and demonstrate it for you with B-roll, which I don't know, no one asked, but I didn't particularly enjoy filming my bedtime routine. I feel like it took away from like bedtime routine when I'm like feeling like I'm being watched because I'm just literally facilitating a camera watching myself. So take that as you will. But next up, we got the summary. So what I'm about to show you is the current first draft of the routine. And that consists of the following. So first, we're doing our dishes or doing whatever else we need to do before we transition to the bedroom. Second thing, transitioning to the bedroom. Basically, putting on PJs, getting into bed, and that's when screen time starts. So I do screen time in bed, whether that's YouTube, whatever else, doesn't matter. Next, getting ready for bed, brushing my teeth, washing my face, taking my vitamins. After that, go back to the bedroom, do some straightening, put clothes away, whatever else then refill the water and then read the book, basically read a book until I want to go to sleep. 
And that's the routine as it currently exists. And I've been liking it. And now that I've summarized it to you, I'm gonna show it to you, which hopefully isn't too boring and redundant. Cue the B-roll. So number one is kind of like before the transition to bed, kind of wrapping things up in the living room, doing the dishes. Most importantly, doing the dishes. I think the thing that will be most consistent in this is doing the dishes, because me and Max already do that before we trans transition into the bedroom. That's kind of already how we do it. I really hate doing dishes, and sometimes Max is a homie and just does them for me. <laughs> It's not super often, but it's often enough. <laughs> so yeah, Max, if you're watching, thank you. <laughs> and, um, just know that on the nights that you do that, it won't be part of my routine, but probably still kind of, I don't know, decluttering the living space and putting all the shit away in here. Okay, after that, we're transitioning to the bedroom. And transitioning to the bedroom probably includes getting into PJs, checking on the room temperature, determining if the AC needs to be turned on, whatever else. Then just like getting into bed, having my screen time, whether that's like YouTube, shopping, whatever I wanna do on the screen, that's what I'm gonna do. Like I said, there's no set time for this. So just however long I want to, kind of like with, I guess, an eye on, like, on what time I wanna go to sleep and what I wanna do before then. Okay, and then after screen time, put the phone and the iPad away. iPad goes in the living room, phone goes um, on the desk. After that, it's getting ready for bed in the bathroom, brushing my teeth, washing my face, taking vitamins. I have to take vitamin D because I think, you know, I think it's mostly because I'm on the East Coast and we don't get sunshine here in the winter, which is very sad. And I mean that literally because lack of vitamin D makes you sad. Okay, and something else I thought about with like the skincare stuff in particular, is just like trying to think of ways to like make it feel good. Sometimes it can feel like a chore and like, I think this is always just gonna be something I dip in and out of. Like sometimes I'm really into skincare um, and it does like feel good when I'm like in the mood. I'm just not always in the mood. And I kind of think I just need to accept that more than anything else, but still it's kind of nice every now and again to be like, all right, let's like think of this as like pleasurable. It's not like a chore, even though it feels like it sometimes. And then after, either brushed, face is washed. That's when I do some like bedroom straightening. So I like put any of the clothes away that haven't been put away, which is such a game changing step because I feel like usually when I change out of my clothes into either like kind of sweats, when I'm like lounging around the house or into like PJs, I really don't want to put them away. <laughs> so having this like time that's like separate from them to just like do it and it actually kind of feels good has been really cool. So far I've really been liking that. And then after that, refilling water, putting on my little chapstick, <laughs> um, and then just reading a book. Okay, there you have it. That's, that's me trying to figure out my bedtime routine. And so far it's kind of figured out. Um, as I've said, I think, oh my God, just a million times in this video, <laughs> I'm sure it's subject to change a lot as I kind of um, just figure out what I like, what I don't like, what's working, what's not working, what ends up feeling like a chore, what doesn't. Um, but right now it's feeling pretty good. I can tell you I've been doing it for a handful of days. I think it feels pretty good. I hope this was helpful. I hope if you were looking for a bedtime routine, it has inspired some creativity and how you're thinking about it and also just some like kind of self-care in the approach thanks for watching like and subscribe if you enjoyed i don't think i did this in the intro but my name is mackenzie this is my channel think too much thanks so much for being here